welcome back to the lecture on multi-user communication. So now that we've seen this uh, unified signal format for TDMA, FDMA and CDMA, we will now study how downlink and uplink communication looks like in more detail. So the transmitted signal by the base station and downlink, so here we can have the picture, the base station is on the left, base station sending one signal to all of the users and this is the superposition of the signals for the individual users. So recall that for instance for TDMA, what this looks like is as follows. You have time, let's say you have three users, then for user one you will send a signal for some time, user two and user three. So for user one you will send a sequence of pulses with data, after that time, you will switch to the signal for user 2. And then finally, you will send the signal for user 3. Right, so then you have x1 of t, x2 of t, and x3 of t. And x1 of t has only values in this range and is zero everywhere else. And then the superposition of all of these three signals is S of T, and that is what is transmitted to the user. Now, each of these signals themselves is, of course, um, so the signal intended for user K. For user K. Is a superposition of data symbols. So this is the data. And then here you have the waveform. These waveforms, of course, are designed to be mutually orthogonal between users and between different time steps. Now, what the Kate user receives is the transmitted signal passed through its own channel, and here we assume a flat fading channel. Plus noise. In order then to recover the alt data symbol for user k, it correlates with SKL, st SKL star and computes this integral. Okay, and then you can you will of course compute the integral with each of these terms. Then what you see is you have of course the channel. You have all of the data symbols intended for user k and this cross correlation, and then all of the signals intended for the other users and this cross correlation. Now, this here is designed to be equal to 0 or 1. It is 0 when L is different from L prime and 1 when L is equal to L prime. So that means this whole summation just becomes this. So you recover your channel gain times the L symbol intended for you. And then you have multi-user interference. And the amount of interference depends on this uh, cross-correlation function. So to what extent is the signal of user k correlated with the signal of user k prime? This multi-user interference will be zero for all of the multiple access schemes. So in TDMA, it will be zero because the times are non-overlapping. For FDMA, this will be zero because the frequency bands are non-overlapping. And for CDMA, this will also be zero because the codes are non-overlapping. So this cross-correlation function will here be equal to 0 or 1. So it will be 0 when k is different from k prime and tau is different from 0. And here when tau is equal to 0 and k is equal to k prime. So actually the function, yeah, this is not completely correct. So this will be tau is equal to mts and different from zero and here tau is equal to zero. Right, so th this is good because now each user just sees its own signal. So this multi-user interference is completely gone under the design of these uh, multiple access schemes. For uplink, things are a little bit more uh, complicated. So the signal sent by user K contains the superposition of its data symbols times its waveform, right, for each of the data symbols indexed by L. 
What the base station then receives, this is an uplink, so the receiver is the base station, is the superposition of all of the waveforms from the different users. Now each waveform will have its own channel gain. Each waveform will also have its own delay. So this depends on the index k. And of course the, the delay will be different just because of different distances. Different distances plus um, synchronization errors. So this means that even when all of the users are at the same distance of the base station, they're going to circle around the base station just because they're not perfectly synchronized and one user transmits a little bit too soon and one a little bit too late, you will have these uh, delay shifts tau. All right, now for user to recover the data from user k for symbol l, we do our cross correlation, but now we need to compensate for this delay. So we assume that this is known. known to the base station, and this is done by uh, estimation, of course, which we don't cover in this lecture. And then when we plug in the equations, we'll again see the same thing as before. We have the channel gain, we have the part related to inter-symbol interference. So this is ISI. And if you look in this ISI equation, you see tau k here and tau k here. So you can remove these tau k's and you find again your same expression as before. So this is equal to 0 or 1. This is when L is different from L prime and L equal to L prime. And then you have your multi-user interference. And now what is important is that you see here tau k and then here you see tau k prime. And these could be different. So the amount of interference will depend on this cross correlation function. So this is what's shown here rho k k prime of tau and we see this appearing again here so this is well okay actually it's more complicated because here we have this even the same l but let's ignore this l so this will be again tau k minus tau k prime and this cross correlation function will look something probably like this right of the tau k minus tau k prime and this leads to residual um, interference between users. It turns out that this interference can be made zero for FDMA because, well, these signals are living in different frequency bands. For TDMA, you can also make them zero under something called timing advance. So you make sure that you transmit at the correct times such that tau k is equal to tau k prime for all k and k prime. So even when the users are, the, are at different distances, you tell users that are further away to transmit a little bit sooner and users that are closer to transmit later. And then at the receiver side, all these delays will turn out to be the same. And then you again have the same results that you have here. Um, for CDMA, there's always residual multi-user interference. So you cannot avoid this multi-user interference because of this synchronization error. And uh, this is especially harmful when a user that is close by is interfering with a user that is far away. And this is called the near-far effect. In order now to reduce this multi-user interference, what the base station can do is something called multi-user detection. So where it, it knows that it recovers the superposition of signals from different users and tries to estimate all of these jointly. So let me just make the expressions a bit more clear. So this is again k, k prime. And if I now want to include this L minus L TS plus L prime TS. Let's see if this is correct. No, because the sign should be different. Good. So this is the cross-correlation function evaluated in this delay delta. And then here I will write delta rho k k prime as a function of delta. And so if you are unlucky, for, even for L different from L prime, you could have two delays that are somehow close to here and then the users will interfere a lot.
to assess the performance in um, multiple access schemes, we don't use traditional SNR anymore, but we want to account for this multi-user interference. So we change our observation model. So it is actually the same observation model as the previous slide. We have the observation containing the intended signal, then interference. So these together are interference, which contains both inter-symbol interference and multi-user interference. So this is interference due to different symbols uh, intended for user K. This can be made zero with uh, proper pulse shipping. So this you can typically ignore. But the multi-user interference you cannot ignore because it depends on this cross correlation function. So this is the same as this, this row that we had before. K, K prime, tau K minus tau K prime, plus L tau S minus L prime tau S. And now I should again double check. Is this, yeah, this looks okay. No. Negative, positive. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, so far in the previous lectures, we've seen um, that the performance depends on the signal to noise ratio. So this could be the bit array rate performance or the rate depends on the signal to noise, the signal power over the noise power. So you take the power of this guy divided by the power of this guy. And that tells you what, it, then it, that tells you how you, your performance will be. When you have interference, we have a different metric, metric called signal to interference plus noise power, a ratio. So we have again the signal power, the noise power, but now we add the power of the interference here. Okay. And this power can be larger or smaller than the noise. In case the noise is really small compared to the interference, we can also have signal to interference ratio. And this is for cases when the interference is really limiting the performance and the noise is very small. Now we will use these performance metrics to design cellular communication systems, which we'll do in the next part.